In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the basic principles and goals of neuroscience. I'll talk about multivariate neuroscience, why it is increasingly important, and why it is becoming such a challenge to analyze all the data that multivariate neuroscience is producing. So first of all, what is neuroscience? Neuroscience is the study of the nervous system, how the nervous system interprets sensory input, that's all of your senses like vision and hearing and taste and so on, how the nervous system produces thought, which is all sorts of internal processes that are not necessarily observable, measurable to an outside person, and ultimately how the nervous system converts all this sensory information, integrates it with thought, and generates some behavior, which is the external actions. This is the way that you interact with the world. Neuroscience is a fascinating and really complex field because it is at the intersection of many other fields, including biology, psychology, physics, mathematics, engineering, chemistry, and yes, even a little bit of philosophy makes its way into neuroscience. So here we have a depiction of a human brain. One of the things that makes the brain such a mind-bogglingly complex system to try to understand is that it operates simultaneously on many different scales and many different levels. So there is the spatial scale, and here you have processes in the brain that are happening at the molecular level, going all the way up to the level of centimeters and tens of centimeters. And there's even higher spatial dimensions or higher spatial scales that we could talk about. And that's things like how your social environment or your cultural context can actually change your thought processes and other processes that are taking place in the brain. There's also a temporal scale that there are things happening in the brain that are really, really fast at the level of nanoseconds and microseconds, milliseconds. There are other dynamics in the brain that happen on the order of seconds to minutes and even hours. And of course, there are changes in the brain over the course of the lifespan, not to mention at the evolutionary scale of thousands and tens of thousands of years. And there's many other ways of describing the complexity, the multi-scale complexity of the brain. So how do neuroscientists understand the brain? Well, they measure activity from the brain at some scale, and that's ranging from ion channels up to networks and behavior. And I put activity in quotes here because even the term activity or activation is a bit of an umbrella term because there are many different dimensions, many different ways that the brain can exhibit that we can measure some kind of activity, some change in the function of the brain. And we measure these changes in the function of the brain through things like electrical sensors or magnetic sensors. We can use cameras or MRI machines. So there's many different ways that can be used to measure brain activity depending on the scale, on the nature of the brain activity that you're looking for and so on. And this point is also really relevant for this course. There are continuous improvements in the brain measurement technologies, and that allows for increasingly precise, increasingly detailed, increasingly high resolution, and therefore increasingly multivariate data sets to be acquired. So it gets easier to measure from more and more measurement points of the brain at cheaper and cheaper costs. So now I'm going to show you a few pictures just to illustrate a few of these different ways of measuring brain activity. So one way of measuring electrical brain activity non-invasively in humans is called the electroencephalogram or EEG. I will be talking a lot about EEG. In fact, I think it's fair to say that most of the course focuses or most of the examples focus on EEG, although I should mention that the methods and analyses that I will introduce are valid and appropriate for any multi-channel time series data, not only EEG. Anyway, EEG involves placing a number of electrodes or electrical sensors outside the head. It's painless, it's non-invasive, it's not dangerous at all, and it gives a 
real-time multi-channel readout of the electrical activity coming from large systems in the brain. This is a picture of MEG or magnetoencephalography. That's a fairly similar principle to EEG, except it's measuring the magnetic fields as opposed to the electrical fields. Here's a picture of an MRI scanner and an individual going into the MRI scanner. This measures pictures of the brain, something like this. And again, there's ways to use MRIs to measure changes in blood flow, which correlates with neural activity, the kind of activity you could measure with EEG. And so this produces high resolution images that change over time. Then we can get down into more detailed invasive measurements, something like invasive electrophysiology, where you can measure the electrical activity, not of large populations of cells working cohesively like this, but of individual brain cells or neurons using very fine electrodes. And this is typically done in animals as opposed to in humans. There's also very detailed images that can be obtained from individual neurons using, for example, optical imaging approaches that measure changes in calcium or other fluorescence indicators in individual brain cells. So this is just a small flavor of the different ways of measuring the brain at very different scales from individual brain cells up to large scale networks that you would measure with MRI or EEG. So that is a quick intro to the big picture goals of neuroscience and ways that neuroscientists measure brain activity. There is an increasing trend in neuroscience towards the idea that cognitive functions like perception and thought and language and emotion, these are generated not by individual brain cells, but by networks and circuits of brain cells that are all working cohesively towards some common computational goal. So this leads to multivariate neuroscience. And that's really the idea that we can understand important features of how the brain works based on considering many measurement points at the same time. And in particular, the conjunction or the interaction across all of these different measurement points, different brain circuits, different neurons simultaneously. And this is different from what I call univariate neuroscience, in which you, can, you might still be measuring from many measurement points, many sensors, but each measurement point is treated and analyzed independently of every other measurement point. So let me go back to this picture of the EEG to explain this a little bit more. In univariate neuroscience, you would analyze each of these electrodes individually. And the analyses would be exactly the same, whether you're measuring from one electrode or from 250 electrodes, because each electrode is analyzed as an independent separate unit. Now, multivariate neuroscience means you are not really interested per se in one individual electrode. Instead, what you are interested in is extracting features or large scale patterns that are emerging out of the interactions across all of the different electrodes. Therefore, in multivariate neuroscience, the results that you get and the interpretations that you might make about the brain would differ depending on whether you're measuring one electrode or 200 electrodes. So why is multivariate neuroscience so challenging? For one thing, the data themselves can be really difficult to acquire. And in many cases, multivariate data sets require quite a bit of expertise, not to mention time, energy, and cost. So it can take a team of experts years to acquire the kinds of data sets that are necessary for doing multivariate neuroscience research. And that's just about collecting the data. Once you get the data, the data themselves can be extremely complex. They can be multidimensional. And therefore, it can require quite a bit of expertise in signal processing, in spectral analyses, and now in multivariate data analyses as well. And it takes people sometimes many years before they gain sufficient expertise to analyze multivariate neuroscience data sets. Furthermore, multivariate neuroscience data analysis is a fairly new and recent development in the history of neuroscience. 
So there isn't a long tradition of data analyses and interpretations and statistical methods to fall back on. So that's what makes multivariate neuroscience really exciting. And that is why I'm really excited to teach this course and to share with you some of the cutting edge methods that people are using and developing to analyze their multivariate data sets.